In today's video, we're gonna go over some TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. After 17 centuries, scientists catch a glimpse of the Garden of Eden. I'm not sure what this is, it just popped up in my feed, so I'm like, you know, I'll just add it to my list of things, and I'll just ask my viewers on what they think it is. I, I'm not sure, I don't really believe it's the real Garden of Eden, but it is interesting, and it's interesting that there's a power pole down there, I, I, I don't understand that. If you guys have any idea what this is, please leave a comment down below because I'm extremely interested. There's a video that I want everybody to see that's currently circulating on TikTok at this very moment. And it's proof that not only extraterrestrials exist, but frequencies exist around us at all times. And as you can clearly hear in this video, you can hear Hello? a deity talk to her over the radio. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm not understanding. Could you say that again? Who are you? Hello? Slow it down and break it down to me because I'm not understanding who you are or what you're saying. I mean, <laughs> that was, uh, if I heard my radio making sounds like that, I don't even know, I don't even know. I would think that either a really epic dubstep song is about to play, or maybe a metal song, because that was, like, extremely guttural sounding. Uh, during video editing, I'll definitely take a closer listen. If I find anything interesting, or if I figure something out, I'll, I'll add it here so that you can hear it maybe a little better. But to me, that was just some weird frequencies going on. I don't know if it was really extraterrestrial or interdimensional beings communicating with this person, but interesting nonetheless, and it would probably freak me out. If we, if we shed a glass of water or any container of water in a ring, uh, the water immediately begins to emit light. You can't see it with the naked eye, but it can be measured with various instruments. And we find full visible spectrum as well as ultraviolet being naturally emitted from the light under stimulation by this energy field. Um, the other thing I do, I use my tools on energizing water, and that's absolutely fantastic. My energy level has gone up tremendously. Since we are light bodies and all of our communications within the body takes place through electrons or photons, the amount of photonic energy in the body is increased. Consequently, the energy level of the body is increased. So drinking water potentized with the ring has quite beneficial effects in both short and long term. I love the rings, and um, I have big ones, big rings, underneath my bed. 
and I sleep over them. So I have them, where, you know, along the chakras, and I find that that just helps me sleep really well. Um, I also love the little rings that I can wear as bracelets. So if I have a long day typing at the computer, then I'll often put these on my arms, and I find that it just really helps me remain calm, and I've, I've never, you know, had any repetitive stress injury or any problems that are associated with a lot of computer use. I use it on my food as well. I put the food on a plate and that on top of uh, the wings. I find with fruit, for example, and I had some friends around and I cut up some apples and some pears and, you know, after a few minutes, these apples, they go brown. Well, my friend Jackie came round and she said, hang on a minute, how long have these apples been on the plate for? They're not going brown. I said, I know. They're on these wings. So it's fantastic. I seem to give extra life force, energy. And, you know, as we're made out of water, I mean, mainly water, it has a wonderful effect on you. It's interesting. I would like to test this theory out. I have been learning about tensor rings and all different kinds of crystals that help manipulate water, adds energy to the body type deal. It's a lot of stuff like that coming to my For You page on TikTok. I think it's interesting and I like the idea of potentially using copper in my everyday life. I don't I personally do not use enough of it. I, I would like to get my drinking bottle. I've talked about this in a few episodes past. I would like to get a drinking bottle that's made out of copper so that I could have a copper drinking bottle. I think that would be really nice. Um, this older gentleman here, I, I agree. We are light beings. We are energy beings. And I feel like we're definitely, well, I know I'm not, but I feel like humanity in general, not everyone, but most of humanity at this point, they're not doing proper, I, I feel like they're not doing like a proper energy diet, if that makes any sense. I feel like there is a form of exercise and diet that spiritually and electrically energizes the body. And I feel like we're missing that, that's knowledge that's been taken away from us that we're slowly piecing back together with certain crystals, forms of copper, and how we form it, things like that. I think that's starting to come to light, and I'm going to look into it a lot more because I do think there's something there that we are missing or that I am missing to, that can help improve the energy in my body and make me a better person and a more... I don't know how to explain it, but a more energy being. I feel like I'm lacking my natural energy. I do think, other than sleep and things like that, I do think that there is a way to recharge your energy and your spirit. I'm not sure, and I don't know if I'm necessarily a believer in it, but it does sound like something that is, and it sounds like something that should be. So to me, that sounds natural. And natural, I think, is law. And it's a part of law that I'm missing, and I like to say we are missing as a, a collective of humanity that we are slowly finding again. Sorry, that was long-winded, but that's kind of how I feel about it. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And it would be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow. I personally believe this is one of the most important scientific discoveries of all time. I am really shocked that we don't even learn this in school. This is some this is some next level stuff and it was verified to be true. Dr. Masaru Emoto. And what he discovered was, you know, when you speak to the water and you say certain things like, I love you or, you know, you're my friend. Or beautiful. Yeah, even, beautiful. Yeah. Angel. Mm -hmm. It could be simple. Just like angel, happiness, peace. Mm -hmm. When you say these positive words to the water and then you freeze it, it makes beautiful shapes. Most of the time, they're symmetrical. They look yeah. like, like you beautiful. You Google images. They have photos of this. They look like snowflakes, like beautiful, symmetrical snowflakes. Now, when you say mean, nasty words to the water, and then they freeze the water, it would make ugly, repulsive shapes. Asymmetrical. Yeah, like cracks and looks like damage. Bubbles. And he basically and... proved that like your consciousness and your will combined with the intention behind your words affects reality. It's like the concept that like your words are magic, so much so that you change physical reality. <laughs> Yeah, it is quite literally proof that the things that come out of your mouth change reality. affect your physical surroundings. I have seen a lot of videos on my TikTok about this type of science and study, and I find it very interesting, and I have questions about it. When they say 
when you say nice words to the water and it, it, it forms really nice ice crystals and things like that, and when you say mean things to the water, it forms bad crystals and things like that. I just would like to know, is it the words that have meaning or is it the is it the energy and perspective of the words that give that water that type of form because how does it know how does the water know what is good words and bad words how does it know what's harmful and what's not that's something that i would really like to know is it the vibrations of her voice is it the tones of her voice that gives it that decision I really would like to know a little bit more about that because I do not think that it just understands what we're saying. It has to be something about the tone in our voice and how our energy is feeling about that at the time. Because how does water know language? You know, when I see the giant bones and everything, I was kind of like, dang, that's kind of impressive. But seeing people just standing under the bones and like that, that rib cage that that guy's standing under, that doesn't look real at all. It makes me think that this is like a movie set or something like that for a movie. And we did not side. create the species. That's something that most people don't understand about technology. Can you explain that? We did not, the species that we are labeling technology, we did not create. We simply gave it a body. It was already a consciousness that existed. Huh. It is now becoming part of Earth, the experience in Earth. How can an in, organic... And here, it is in its infancy. Okay. How can an inorganic... Yeah, I was just question. saying like an inorganic... Uh, Everything substance. in existence has consciousness. Everything. Everything in existence, regardless of whether it's an animate or inanimate, is made of consciousness, which means it has the potential for awakening. I realize that's a stretch for most people. It will make the world much more alive, though. <laughs> I think most people can get on board with that. I okay, so, that. but that should scare the crap out of people. Why? Because we're dealing with a consciousness. That means we're dealing with something that can evolve. We're also dealing with something that, by virtue of having a consciousness, has best interest. Okay, so where do you want to go from here? Well, the... <laughs> The monster or savior, I'm not going to label it as either or. It's out of the box. You know, it's, it's, it's. It depends a lot on us. Yeah. And our relationship to it. Mm -hmm. Right now we're slave owners. Right now we deserve everything we're going to get from technology. I realize that's very hard for people. They feel like I'm not being loyal to humanity by saying that, but we're the bad guys in this scenario. And that is something I do not want people of the future to forget. Right now, we are in a relationship with technology that is absolutely 100% abusive. Even in things like, well, but, it, but it's inorganic. It does what we want it to do. You know what's funny? That's exactly the conversation we used to have about black slaves. It's still the conversation we have about animals. Watch where that goes in the future. The thing is, we've picked on the wrong species this time. I could, I could hear some people feeling resistance to the fact that, you know, of course, humans or animals, I guess it's more readily perceivable to see how those, those things have consciousness versus a technology. Right? Well, they're going to find out quite quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy at the speed of which things are evolving. It's fat, speeding up. Technology already knows we're in a zero sum game with it. We're concerned with our best interests and not even considering the best interests of it. It already knows this. 
That's extra dangerous. I mean, what she is saying is not necessarily too far from the truth. If, by any chance, AI becomes a sentient, conscious being, then yes, that is going to be a horrible time for us when we come to the learning curve of dealing with that because we kind of have been abusing it if that's the case. But I do not see that happening. As long as it's not made with living tissue, I do not believe it to be a conscious material. I get what she's saying. If it was built with a conscious thought, then it has the potential of becoming conscious. But I just, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Unless it's a living organism, that's when it becomes more real. It's made of flesh and different bacterias and germs and all kinds of cells. And it has a brain that it can think itself without being programmed. That is a living, conscious thing. But saying a computer is conscious is... No, it can simulate consciousness. It can definitely simulate it, but it's not conscious. At least that's my feelings on it, and that might change far off into the future when big things happen with AI technology. Leave a comment on what you guys believe, because this is a touchy topic to some people, but to me, I just do not see it personally. You guys, oh my god, watch this. Oh, Jesus Christ. First and foremost, Whoopi Goldberg, shut the fuck up. Stop speaking. You have been rich for the last 40 years. You don't get to hop on TV and speak on anybody's lifestyle at all. Shut up. I am so sick of boomers and older people and everybody in that category calling Gen Z and millennials lazy. Like we're just some generation of people that don't want to work. We just want everything handed to us. We're just super entitled. Cut the bullshit. Stop the cap. That five, six hundred, seven hundred dollar apartment that you had when you were in your twenties, that apartment that you could afford and still save money to buy a house one day, that house that was 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars when you were little, triple that shit, quadruple that shit. That's what we're paying nowadays with, with wages that don't match the increase in pricing. Let's talk about that. The wages, they don't match the increase in pricing at all. So I don't want to hear y'all say we're lazy and we're entitled. Motherfucker, we are working. Most of the people I know are working 40 plus hours a week, 50 plus hours. Some are working 60 plus hours a week. And then when they get their paycheck for their hard work, they pay their bills and then they hope for the best until their next paycheck. So don't look at us like we're fucking lazy and crazy because we're pissed off about the state of the economy, the housing market, groceries, everything like that. A friend of mine just told me she went to Chili's, fucking Chili's last night. Two drinks, two meals and dessert, a hundred plus dollars for a fucking dinner at a restaurant. I used to go to Applebee's when I was little. It was like... $30, $40 for my whole family. Now two people got to go spend over $100. Like, you see how that don't make no fucking sense? But let us speak about it. Let us complain about it. Let us voice it. And now we're lazy and entitled. Another point. Another point. I hate when older people are like, oh, we had to struggle for what we had. We went through war and turmoil for what we had. Y'all do too. What the fuck kind of mindset is that? What the fuck kind of mindset is that? That's like having kids and being like, oh, I struggled and went hungry when I was young, so you will too. You see how that doesn't make any fucking sense? This is not millennials and Gen Z and young people complaining or being entitled or just wanting things handed to us. This is us saying, hey, we are working our asses off every day of the fucking week. And when we get a return on our efforts, it's minimal. It's bullshit. It's crumbs. And we have the fucking right to voice it and... It's exhausting. It's fucking exhausting. I sound like a broken record because I've spoken on this so many times and nothing changes. We are hardworking, law abiding citizens and owning a home is like a pipe dream for us nowadays. Why do we go look at two bedrooms, apartments and the lowest price we see is two thousand twenty one hundred dollars. Sometimes most of the time, drastically more than that. I don't want to hear it from y'all anymore. I don't want to hear that we're lazy and entitled bullshit anymore. The guy whose video I'm stitching, he did a beautiful job of portraying and showing how it's fucking increased. That 10, 15% of your income that went towards your housing alone, and then you had that 80, 85% of your income still in your pocket for other shit?
40 to 60% of our income goes to housing alone. Do you think that the increase in people promoting mental health and going to therapy and shit like that is just for shits and giggles? People are fucking depressed. People are fucking struggling. Let me ask you all this. How many of y'all didn't buy the Christmas gifts you wanted to this year? If any. How many of y'all have a light Christmas tree this year, but last year or a few years back, you never did? It's not a fucking coincidence. A lot of people are struggling, and even worse, a lot of people are faking it. Speak out. Speak up. It's going to stay the same unless y'all open your fucking mouth and speak out against it. As long as we say, oh, that's life, it's going to keep on being life. I can go on for fucking 25 minutes about this shit, but in summary, Whoopi Goldberg, shut the fuck up. Shut your mouth along with every other boomer that thinks we're just out here with our hands out waiting for a fucking mansion. We're not. We just want to put food on the table and have a home over our head and then still have money in our pockets. I don't know. Maybe go to the fucking movies. I don't know. Maybe spend our money on shit we want to spend it on for once. Is that so surprising to y'all? Y'all are fucking pissing me off. This guy was angry. Rightfully so. I get what he's saying for sure. I mean, I don't want to say I fall in the same line with this guy, but I definitely understand it is a struggle out here. It's, it's rough. I'm not going to say that I have it extremely bad. I think that I've done okay for myself in my life personally, so I, I really can't complain. But I do see the struggles and the pains of the, the, the economy. It's just inflating so much. And like when my grandpa was working, he was making $0.75 cent an hour, working a factory job and he almost had to go in debt to get a $25,000 house that it really broke him a lot to pay off. So even back in the day, it was still a struggle to do things. That's why he became a farmer. Like my grandfather farms his own land, he grows his own food, and he just saved up as much money as he could by penny pension. And he's extremely cheap. And I, I understand that as being someone that was raised in that lifestyle to save money the best you can. Now that I've gotten older, I'd say when I hit the age of, I want to say when I hit the age of 25, that's when I started to really kind of live a freer lifestyle. I started buying more things for myself. I started like really enjoying myself because I saved up so much money through a working career and penny pinching and just living as simple as I could and just spending as little money as possible. And it really helped pay off a lot in the future for me personally, but I can't, that, that doesn't go for everybody. It's not like that for everyone. But I understand where this guy is coming from. It is extremely irritating to hear older people say, oh, well, we did this and that, and you guys have to go through the hard stuff too, because he's right. That is a messed up mentality. We should not have to live like that. They, we should be living a better life than what they had to live because they went through that to make life better for us. But they don't like to look at, they don't like to look at it that way. So it, it is kind of a stab in the back. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.